All right. So, this is what I'm going to be talking about today. The sweet stuff made in Wisconsin. <laughs> we're going to get to that. All right, so we're going to start off with the journey of a drop of sap. Sap being the primary uh, first ingredient, only ingredient, uh, to making maple syrup. Uh, there's a few different ways to make syrup, and the old way was first done by the Indians, Native Americans in, I don't know where, somewhere in the Northeast uh, America, Northeast or Southeast uh, Canada, and where they found the sweet flavor of sap. So they would stuck a uh, stick in a tree and drain the sap out and collected it and made syrup. So this is the old way of making syrup. This guy is going to put a hole in the tree with a hand drill. Very, very uh, labor intensive when you got to do a thousand of these. Um, and then we're going to put a spout in the tree. This is actually this picture from my house. And we're going to hang bags or buckets or, or anything to collect the stuff coming out of the tree. And then we're going to collect it. This is my, my goddaughter here. She loves to go out and play in the woods and make syrup. Um, it's a, a really big family affair. Um, and we just you know have a good time and make syrup. It's fun. So after we go out, and tap the tree, hang the bags on the tree, and find the trees where the syrup or sap is coming from. We're gonna go and collect it. So this is a bucket that's hanging on a tree. This guy's gonna put it in a pail. And then these are the ways we bring it to the sugar house. This is the old way. Uh, I actually have neighbors down the street, about a family of 20 or so Amish individuals, and that's how they still collect it to this day. And then this is how we used to collect it. And then store it in tanks, and then the fun really begins. Because all the work is done. Yeah, right. So then you take it to the sugar house, like that. Uh, that's uh, an old time one. And then we cook it. Um, this is uh, my first evaporator where I learned how to make syrup. And as you can see, it runs on more than wood if you uh, get my drift. Um, and so with that one, we would we would take the syrup or the sap and we would pump it into a, a tank that was sitting somewhere over here, and then it would drain into here. Can anyone guess about how many gallons an hour we would burn off with this type of system? 0.75. You're close. Seven gallons an hour we could do. Uh, and you would, on a normal day, on a normal day when the temperatures range from you know 25 degrees Fahrenheit at night to 45 degrees Fahrenheit in the day, and we had roughly 100 taps at the time, we would get about 100 to 120 gallons of syrup, uh, sap. So you can see that in one day, we have a lot of cooking to do, only going at six to seven gallons an hour. So how many how many gallons of sap does it take to make I'm, one gallon? I'm getting there. One second. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then after we would do that, and after cooking, you know, for X amount of hours, we would make our final product. Rock spring lager, that's what it used to be. Um, so with this system here, my dad and I had it down to a science, because syrup is graded on a dark, medium, and light amber, like range, color range, and the taste is normally the same, but sometimes the darker is a little more full flavor. Uh, my dad and I had it figured out that we would get anywhere between 70 and 100 gallons of sap in the pan right there, and that would make roughly three gallons of syrup on a good on a good year, um, and then that would get us the really light amber, good flavor. So that was the old way of doing it. We did it in batches, and we would store sap a lot. Um, but that, like I said, that's the old way that we used to do it. Uh, and then starting three years ago, we moved into a more commercial. Uh, I guess production. So this was the old way. And the question: How many? Uh, how long can you keep that sap before you burn it? Before it goes bad. So you can keep the sap roughly, depending on I guess depending on the sugar content. It all is depending on how you store it. 
if you store it in a uh, stainless steel tank that's covered, um, you know, in the shade, and it freezes at night, it's probably going to last a week. Um, if you store it like in something like this outside, you're probably going to last about two days. So yeah, this was the old way. You got the, you know, all the wood fired and. So our first sugar shack that we had was these here. We had a, this is me here, you can tell. Uh, this, and uh, we put a tarp over it and we just, you know, every spring it was something new until a, a storm broke it off. So now the journey of a drop of sap the new way. Uh, so now we have 120 acres uh, that we tap and we put on roughly 3,000 to 4,000 taps every year. Uh, and it's much more commercialized. Yes? Uh, what kind of trees do you use the sap for? Maple syrup made from maple trees. Maple trees. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so here is our sugar bush. This whole area here. Okay? And we have roughly 90 to 100,000 feet of tubing that starts from that corner and runs from that corner. And it all comes down to here, one little spot. Uh, we have a pump that, and this one, this is what the, all the woods looks like. We have tubing running everywhere. There's main lines going all over the place. I think we have 13 or 14 main lines now. Um, and then we have uh, lateral lines that run off of there. And you just go out and store cell trees. Yes? Do you ever have animals like running into it? No, they don't. They, we have a huge deer population. And they, they, they squirrels will chew on it, um, but we take care of that easily and enough. Does it run by gravity or? Do you have I'm getting there it? too. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. oh uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our pump house, okay? So we have a vacuum pump that when we go out, when we start tapping every year, we turn our vacuum pump on, and it's a seven horsepower pump, pulls 35 cubic feet per minute. We can hold roughly 23 to 27 inches of vacuum at all times. And it pulls, whoops, it pulls the sap from that corner to here, which is, it, it probably travels about a mile by the time it gets to the pump house by based on going through all the tubing and up. Because you try to take it from the highest point, bringing it all the way down to the lowest point. Well, we had to kind of go around some hills and kind of make it interesting to get it there in the right way uh, and to make it more cost effective. So yeah, we have a pump house here. Inside the pump house is a thing called a releaser. The releaser takes all the sap from all the pipes coming in, pumps it to another tank, which you'll see in a second. So this is what you do then, just like the old way, but we use a drill and we tap a tree. This here is a silver maple. Um, there's three different types of maple trees. There's silver, reds, and sugar maples. Um, the sugar maple has a sugar content of roughly 2.2 um, I don't remember, I think it's 2.2%, I know that's what it is, but but then uh, the silvers and reds are roughly 1.7, 1.8. And when we have syrup like that, we try to get it concentrated as much as we can, so we try to get as many soft hard, hard maples in there as possible. Um, so that's what we just run our, our tubing all to all the maple trees we have, basically, and take it that way. So there's the pump. That is not our pump, it's the same one, but not the one, it's, it's huge. It weighs about 500 pounds. My dad and I have to take it out every year. It's a fiasco getting it in and out of that pump house. More lines. These are called lifters. See how, here's a line here, they go, the sap goes into here, and then it takes the vacuum and it pumps it and makes it so it's more gravity flowing downhill. Um, this is the only way we could get around a few spots. And we have two of these. Uh, this one here, this one here handles 1,800 taps, and then actually these are both the same one, uh, but the other one handles 1,200 taps. And, and there's just our pump house again. Uh, my dad walking there, that's our first storage tank that our little releaser pumps our sap to. And then this is another thing to get elevation change so we have more of a gravity flow. Um, and that all is run on the pump. There's no extra like um, power running to these things. It's all based on on back and it just it can suck it up. There's one uh, guy we know has one that sucks it up 20 feet, and it, he doesn't lose any vacuum that way. 
So it goes a long ways. It works really, really well. Yep. And you can use the same tree. You just can't tap in the same spot. Uh, the best thing to do is for that is you want to. So you tap. Say you tap here one year. Your next one's going to be over here the next year because there's it, the tree actually dies around that little spot. But then as it as it grows in your annual growth rings, they cover it up. And then and then but that part of the tree is still dead. So when you would, if you would drill into the same spot, it would be you wouldn't get anything. Um, and the only part of the tree that is actually alive is what's behind the bark. Um, and that's where the sap actually runs and it follows the spout out and then into the um, into the tree. So how, how high up the trunk do you go? Do you determine <clears throat> how much you can sap you get or not? No, it doesn't matter. Um, we we have to be at a good good for gravity. So most of ours are gonna be about right about head high. Um, there's some where we have to actually get on a ladder to do. Uh, other ones, though, are a vast majority of ours are, I would say, between waist and head height. And it's all based on gravity, you know, trying to get the best flow to our, to our main lines. So now that we have our sap that was in the, in the pump house and into the tank here, we take a pump and there's our truck. We have a man, our, uh, removable bridge that we put across the ditch every year. And and we take this pump, we pump it from here to our truck, which was a 400 gallon tank. Uh, that is a 1500 gallon tank. And we just move it that way. And then we, my dad, one time last year, he made, I want to say, I think, I think he told me he made 18 trips in one day. And that was a good day. He was doing nonstop. So, so yeah, here we're at the, we're at the sugar house. Um, different ways of hauling it all, you know, and here's the tank in, in the back of the truck, and, and then you just pump it to the our other tanks, which are the exact same tanks that we had at the pump house. And then the fun really begins. Um, getting into making maple syrup when I was younger, it was just a family affair. We had, you know, just all of us. My dad has 14 brothers and sisters, and and everybody came out, and we would sit around our, our evaporator and have fun, play cards, you know, I was a kid, I wasn't drinking beer um, until I was older. Uh, and then, yeah, and now, and now my, my goddaughter's out all the time. This, this is not very many of my family, but it's all my family, my cousin Tiff and all their girls. And so we have, you know, just people are coming out all the time, visiting, they're interested in seeing it, and it's, it's just a good time. So in the commercialized part, we have more things because since we have such a high volume, and sap is roughly coming out of the tree, since we have more red maples at 1.7% sugar, we try to concentrate. Because at 1.7% sugar, it takes a long time to make a gallon of syrup. We, we need roughly between 45 and 50 gallons of sap to make one gallon of, of syrup. And doing that without concentrating before would just take way too much time. This is a reverse osmosis machine. And like I don't, I'm sure you guys all know about it, uh, the semi-permeable membrane, we get fresh water coming on one side and then the filtered stuff here. Well, we're actually pouring fresh water down the drain and we're taking the permeate, or the, uh, the permeate concentrate. We're taking the concentrate and that's what we're putting in this tank, which is feeding our evaporator. Our evaporator is an intensifier, 30 feet wide by 13 feet long evaporator. They call it an arch. And we have different pans. We have a flu pan here, seven feet long. Flu pan is just, a, there's different flues in it. It goes over an inch, down 11, over an inch, up 11. Increases surface area, increased surface area, increases boiling, and then we boil off more um, water that way. Uh, and this is, when we got this, when I first found this thing, we bought it used, and I was pretty excited. Um, and, because it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty nice piece of equipment. Uh, and we got, it was really nice to have. Um, so then, yeah, it goes into the flu pan first, and then when it comes out of the flu pan, it's roughly 40% sugar at that time. When it comes out, of, when it goes into the sugar pan, we have two pans here, there's four compartments,